Hey, nice to have you with us again today. Uh, over halfway through my self-isolation, uh, the, the whole little family unit is um, getting a little bit antsy at this stage and, and wanting to, uh, to, to get out and start doing things. Um, I think the only one who is not as antsy as the rest of us uh, is little Cameron, who is 11 years old, uh, and he's been isolated in his playroom. Yes, that's right, for the PlayStation and all those things. Uh, I do sometimes think that when he's supposed to be online learning, uh, it's not always online learning. He's learning about other things online um, that are a lot more fun uh, than listening to a teacher. But anyway, that's, that's how life goes. Um, uh, nice to have you with us. And uh, it's uh, the it's the fun part of the week that starts now. We've done we've done the business, we've done the legal, we've done the medical side of it. Now we start now we start having fun, building up to the weekend. And what better way to have fun than to talk travel? And uh, we're joined in the studio by uh, Kirsty Rabello, who is head of commercial supply for uh, a Fly Center Travel Group. Kirsty, thank you very much for, very much for coming into our studio. There's still this confusion around um, travel and all the rest of it. And we thought we'd take a look specifically today at, at one, one particular venue, and that's London. Because I think that is probably one of the most uh, sought after destinations by uh, the South African market. Um, either if they're going to London or going to visit people in England, or they're moving through London to another uh, another venue in the world, or another another uh, country in the world. Um, just just give us the update there. What, what's the status with 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 uh, London? Well, travel in general remains pretty complex, and London is no different. So, mm. you know, direct carriers haven't been flying into South Africa. So the likes of British Airways and Virgin Atlantic. Uh, but exciting news is Virgin Atlantic is due to start uh, their direct flights. And, you know, with that then creates more confusion because who's allowed to go? Um, yeah. Yeah. That's another another so, thing to unpack. Um, okay. Well, the, the, the they've got these, these various lists um, uh, in, in the UK. I mean, you've got the, the green, the... The amber and the red, am I correct in, correct. in saying that? Yes, yes. And South Africa um, is very much still on that, that red list, which does make uh, travel yeah. complicated for us. Um, tourists yeah. are not permitted into, into the UK. J just off the top of your head, if you do know, what are some of the countries that are on the green list? Um, so the likes of like in New Zealand, for example, Singapore, I'm not going to give you the whole list. Uh, it changes on a bi-weekly basis. So actually this week is the week that they set to review that green list. Um, chances are we won't be on it. <laughs> so, um, sure. yeah. So at this stage, a South African traveling to, into Heathrow mm -hmm. still has to um, go into isolation. If, is, it, is, is it still a, a two week isolation period? Yes, it's a 10 day quarantine. So, Tourists aren't allowed from here into, into the UK. However, if you are going and you're a returning resident or if you've got a visa to, to go back into the UK with, in, in other words, you are going to stay there indefinitely or work, then you need to go into the government allocated hotels for quarantine, which is a 10 day period. Now, just out of interest, if there are people who do qualify for that and they are looking at going back to the UK, um, those government appointed um, quarantine areas, um, that I believe, and it changes all the time, so we've got to keep updating it, mm -hmm. um, that I believe is at your own cost as well. It is, and it's a significant cost. Um, I mean, the last time I checked it was around 70,000 rand a person for those 10 days. Wow. Jeepers. Yeah. So it's a substantial... That's a, whack of money to, yeah. that's a whack of money to pay just to sit on your own. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, the do you still have to then t take COVID tests and all the rest of it? If you even yes. if you are part yes, of that that grouping. 
Yeah, so you and, would need and your... And what, what are the rulings there? You would need your PCR test before you left South Africa, 72 hours prior to, to departure. Um, right. You'd then also need to do another test on arrival, and then there's a two-day later that you need to do another test also at your own cost. Jeez. Okay, now you, you mentioned earlier that um, the Virgin Atlantic um, travel group are looking at flying directly in there. Um, it may be a good point to zoom in Lisa Gerke here, who is with Virgin Atlantic. Lisa, thank you very much for taking time out to join Kirsty and I um, on this particular discussion. Why the hell would Virgin Atlantic be flying, starting direct flights uh, from, from I, I take it it's, it's, it's our Tambo, um, or, or is it uh, Cape Town? You can correct me if I'm, I'm wrong there. Uh, why would you be looking at doing direct flights into, into Heathrow? Maybe, um, Jeremy, thank you very much for having me. And um, maybe I'll just rewind a little bit and explain what's happened over the last sort of six months. So towards the latter part of uh, last year, uh, the, the government put a, the UK government put a restriction on South African travellers uh, who, uh, because of this new South African variant, a COVID variant, that nobody could fly between South Africa and the UK on a direct flight. So you could still go to the UK via another city, uh, via Europe or the Middle East, but direct operations that impacted Virgin Atlantic and British Airways had to cease to operate. And what changed is that earlier this month, earlier in the month of June, the UK government uh, made a revision to that regulation. And they said that from, um, from June onwards, those carriers who fly directly between the UK and South Africa can resume their travel. So, so that's really the big reason why we are resuming um, our flights between the UK and South Africa, because we, we now have the OK to do so. Um, mm -hmm. And secondly, uh, yes, it is still very restrictive for all of the reasons that Kirsty explained. Um, but there is, there is, a, there is a group of, of people who still want to commute between South Africa and the UK, whether it is for work or personal or, um, or, or whatever reason they, they want to travel between, uh, you know, because they have to relocate uh, or if they, you know, want to see family members. And, and yes, it is still very, very restrictive. You have to have a British passport or you have to have one of the specific visas that the UK government um, indicates you need to travel on. Uh, there are some people who want to do it. And yes, it does uh, mean that you have to quarantine for 10 days on arrival uh, in the UK in a government appointed hotel uh, at the cost of £1,750 uh, for the first person and then additional cost for, for additional people to stay in the same room. Um, but th th there is a demand for people who want to do that. And for that reason, we will be restarting our services uh, from the 24th of June, first flight in three times a week. And that uh, is into our tambo. Correct, yes. So we'll be operating between uh, our tambo and London Heathrow. Our Cape Town service is a seasonal service, and we hope to restart that by the end of uh, this year. I mean, obviously, the red list is very restrictive. I mean, essentially, the UK government um, is giving a very strict advice to British tourists to not travel to, to restricted countries, to red countries, or even amber countries. They give uh, very, very sort of strict regulations associated with that. So uh, we, we hope to obviously move down um, on, on, on the travel restriction list to possibly an amber or green later this year, at which point in time we will restart our Cape Town service, knowing that the, the British public is the number one tourist market for South Africa. It's a very, very big part of our um, aviation or tourism income into South Africa. It, it comes from the UK. So it's in our interest to restart the Cape Town service um, at the right time. Okay, um, Kirsty, back to you. Um, the uh, just to make something clear here, even if you do fly through the UK, or let me put it this way: is it, is it possible to use the UK as a a, a jump off point to to go into other areas around the world? Or do you still have to go into the quarantine in the UK before you can get out to another country? Do you know what I'm trying to get at here? Yes. 
So you can <laughs> fly via the UK to another country, so long as that country is allowing South Africans to, to travel to it. Um, you would be exempt from the, the quarantine if you are just staying airside and transiting onto another country. So if I wanted to, for any reason, um, I could actually fly Virgin Atlantic to the UK and then transit to the Maldives, where we are allowed to go, for example. Yes, that you could do. Okay. 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 Any from from either of you? Um, let's let's go back to let's firstly start with Liesl. Um What what advice, Liesl, could you give? to travelers who are planning to travel to the UK? So that's a really good question. And the top tip that I would say to anyone who needs to travel from South Africa to the UK is that you need to pre-purchase that hotel quarantine package before you buy your plane ticket. So there's a whole host of countries on the red list. Um, and all of these countries that the UK have placed on the red list need to quarantine for 10 nights on arrival at a government appointed hotel, which means there may not be enough hotel rooms for everyone who needs to quarantine. So don't arrive at the airport with your flight ticket to London, not having pre-booked your hotel uh, quarantine. Mm -hmm. Now the package, the 1,750 Rand package, it's an inclusive package of all your meals. It's got your PCR, COVID tests included in it. So it's kind of like everything that you need for that 10 night period. And obviously if you test negative throughout, you'll be released after 10 nights. But if you need to stay on, you obviously can just stay on the, on the hotel for extra nights. So my number one tip is please make sure that you book the quarantine hotel at the same time as you make your flight booking or just before so that you don't get stuck um, and, and have bought yourself an air ticket and then can't travel because you've not sorted that out beforehand. And that is only in place until such time as South Africa moves from the red list to the amber list. And then that government hotel quarantine is not a requirement anymore. So this may just be something that is in place for short term, but certainly for the near term future. Yeah, very good advice. It's actually something that I'd never, it, it, it had never occurred to me. You know, you, <laughs> it's foreign. You, you I know it's foreign for all of us. Yeah, I mean, I think, Kirsty, I think we all presume, or maybe because you guys are in the travel industry, you don't presume. But I think a lot of people who would want to travel do presume a lot about these um, and and don't even make any any sort of plans ahead of that. Have you got any other advice for people who are traveling to the UK, Kirsty? Yeah, well, I think just for traveling anyway, um, and certainly back in pre-COVID times, you know, travel was fairly complex um, in any case, but certainly now, even myself personally, I would enlist the advice of a travel professional because today I could be telling you, well, this, this, these are the requirements, but you know, in a week's time it could change. And if you don't have that expert advice, you know, you'll be forking out money for, you know, for no reason where you've got to make changes and um, perhaps arrive at the destination and aren't allowed in. So it is really key to to get that professional advice of someone that actually has access to the information as it changes. Yeah, I think um, now more than ever, um, travel professionals are, are what people need. We, we were saying on this particular show, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, um, but we were just saying that there are some industries where you don't actually want to engage or need to engage with people in the industry. But in this particular industry, there's a vital need to have that travel professional behind you because things are so fluid um, at the moment. And, and, and you need somebody at the other end of a phone or at the other end of a computer, or if you feel, if you feel comfortable um, at the other side of a desk, who is going to give you the advice that, that you need. Because um, as Lisa was saying, you know, I, I wouldn't have even thought about booking the, 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 the quarantine room. Um, and that, that's what you need the professional there for. Yes, exactly. Ladies, thank you very much for your insight. Thank you very much for your time. I see we've, we've had some really, really interesting specials running on our ticker tape as well. You can take those uh, details down 
and get hold of your nearest flight center either by phone or by email or by popping in as well. Um, on behalf of everyone here at Mansfield today, if you are traveling anywhere, happy traveling. And uh, to Kirsty and to Diesel, thank you very much for joining us on uh, Mansfield today. Cherry bye, everybody. We'll catch you tomorrow.